Hi guys, I'm Carolina and I work with data. If you're new to this channel, subscribe for weekly content about data engineering, machine learning, and life. Some of you have asked me if I will ever make a video about Docker. And conveniently, I'm actually working on Docker at work at the moment. So I thought the time is ripe. Before I get to it, I just want to say that if you enjoy watching my videos, if you found some of them useful, feel free to get me a cup of coffee, which I'm linking in the description below. This is helping me to run this channel, Docker. This will be the simplest video on YouTube about Docker because I will just tell you in very kind of practical terms what Docker is used for. I will not explain any details because frankly, I don't know many details. I'm just learning Docker myself, but I can tell you this. Docker is used to package applications. Package? What does package mean? And why would you package applications? To package an application means to provide a little environment in which your application can live. This environment will contain everything that this application needs to live. For example, correct module versions, correct libraries, etc. So essentially, Docker is a virtualization technology that creates this virtual environment for your application to live. Now, why would you want to do that? The reason is because it is so much easier to manage applications that have isolated environments. For example, if you've been developing an application on your Windows with some given settings that you've got on your Windows, but you want to make sure that this application will also work on somebody else's Windows with potentially different settings, or maybe on somebody's Mac, then you need Docker. Because in this way, you don't care about anybody's settings. This is because the Docker environment that you've created on your machine will work exactly the same on everybody else's machines. That's the beauty of Docker. Now, if you know a little bit about computer science, you might be asking, but there are virtual machines already, so how's Docker different from that? In fact, Docker is quite similar to a virtual machine. But let's look at this picture to understand one crucial difference. Each virtual machine must have its own operating system installed. That's quite a lot of overhead. That eats up a lot of space and it slows things down. It's inefficient. Docker, on the other hand, uses your native operating system. So you might have 10 different Docker containers running on your computer, but all of them will use one operating system. That is what makes them so lightweight and so efficient. So now you might be thinking, since they share one operating system, there must be something that will allocate resources fairly to all containers, right? You don't want one container to use up all the resources while other containers are starving. We want container equality. So you might have heard of Kubernetes? That's Stalin in the Docker's world. It manages all the containers, or in other words, it does the container orchestration so that there is some equality and resources are managed effectively. If you are developing one app on your machine, Kubernetes is probably not going to be very useful to you. But where it really shines and where it is very necessary is at scale in the business world, where you're managing, you know, potentially hundreds of applications and you have to make sure that at any given time they have enough computing resource. So that's Docker for you. To get started with Docker, it is actually very, very easy. Well, it gets complicated when you get to the details of Docker, but the kind of very basic stuff is very basic and simple. So I am linking the official documentation in the description below, which I think is a good start. I hope this was useful, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.